Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. I hope you guys are well. In today's video, I give you my take of the EcoFlow Glacier battery fridge. I have been testing it at home in my workshop, but also on a few trips. And uh, today I tell you all the good, the bad, and whether I would recommend the fridge. So let's get into it. For full disclosure, EcoFlow provided me this fridge free of charge for review and testing purposes. However, they have zero influence on my review and uh, certainly haven't paid me any money for this. Ever wondered if you can get ice cubes in just 15 minutes while camping? The EcoFlow Glacier claims to do just that. Stick around and I'll share later in the video whether this speedy ice making feature is as practical as it sounds in the rugged outdoors. Yeah guys, what I just showed you was one of the two unique features of the EcoFlow Glacier fridge and that was the ice making capabilities. I will tell you a little bit later whether I think it's worth it. I had a chance now to test this fridge for a few weeks and also take it away on a trip. And before we get into the nitty gritty of this fridge, let's have a look at the specs as we can find them on the website. AC input is between 100 and 240 volt at 180 watt. The solar charging input is 240 watt, 11 to 60 volt and 13 amp max. The car charging input is 96 watt at 12 volt 8 amp max. The battery pack is 298 watt hour NMC lithium. The fridge weighs 23 kg without a battery and is single zone 38 liters and dual zone 36 liters. The dimensions are 776 mm by 385 mm by 445. That is without handles and wheels. The fridge cooling range is from minus 25 degrees to plus 10 degrees at 25 degrees ambient temperature. The noise level are supposedly 52 decibels for ice making and 42 for refrigeration. The refrigeration power is 120 watt, which is quite a big compressor. Connection is via Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, 2.5G only. It also has an accompanying app. Before we get further into the review, I have to ask for your help. I really don't like asking like this, but YouTube again tweaked its algorithm and over the past few months it's harder and harder for smaller creators like me to really get views. I'm not alone there. I spoke with some peers which are in the same area and they noticed the same. So I would really appreciate if you could uh, watch the video in its entirety, if you could share, like, leave me a comment in the comment section because that makes a difference for the YouTube algorithm. And even better would be if you check out some of my other videos because that is also something YouTube takes into account. Thank you very much for that. Let's get back to the review. Now, having the specs out of the way, let's have a look in all the features and functionality of the EcoFlow Glacier fridge and all the testing I did. The second unique feature this fridge has is that you can purchase an optional 298 watt hour NMC lithium battery. And as I will explain later, it does not make sense to purchase a fridge without the battery. Now guys, the EcoFlow Glacier fridge has been running for the past two days, so let's have a look. I think it is done by now. It is. Okay, so 19 hours and that's the second day. So we're empty now. We're down at 4%. In my thorough testing of the EcoFlow Glacier fridge, I paid close attention to its performance in real-world conditions. With an average ambient temperature of 25 degrees and both compartments set to 3 degrees as a fridge, it impressively lasted 38 hours and 50 minutes. I ran this test twice, once in eco mode and once in regular mode. Interestingly, the runtime differed by only a few minutes between modes, however, the eco mode showed a bit larger temperature fluctuation. While using the fridge camping outdoors on a 30 degree day, I noticed a challenge in the freezer compartment. 
It couldn't get below minus 4 degrees, even when set to minus 25 degrees. This was a stark contrast to its performance at a more moderate 25 degree ambient temperature, where it efficiently reached minus 20 degrees in the freezing compartment. Just keep that in mind when camping in very hot conditions. Now guys, been 7 hours. And it's reasonably solid frozen. Not completely, but yeah, probably around 10 hours. Second compartment um, went down also to minus, even though it was at plus 3, so I put it at plus 5 now, I think. Yeah, and now it's at plus 3 so that my other stuff doesn't freeze. In exploring the versatility of the EcoFlow Glacier, I was particularly impressed by its dual zone functionality. It's not just about having separate compartments, these fridge freezer can easily transform into a single zone unit. When you remove the compartment wall, it automatically detects this change and switches to single mode and vice versa, a feature that I find quite nifty and practical. Another well thought out aspect is the storage solution for the compartment wall. You can store it away in the lid of the fridge. This is a neat feature ensuring you won't misplace the wall when not in use. One uh, undocumented feature is that you actually can change the size of the ice cube. Small ice cube. Big ice cube. There is also a drainage hose on the side of the fridge which lets you drain the remaining water out of the ice maker. I must give credit where it's due to EcoFlow for their innovative approach to ice making in the Glacier fridge freezer. The concept they've implemented is ingenious. Supercooling metal rods to form hollow bullet shaped ice cubes. What's even more impressive is the inclusion of a heating element. This element warms the metal rods to detach the finished ice cubes with ease. It's this kind of smart practical innovation that really stands out and shows EcoFlow's commitment to not just functionality but also to innovation. The fridge has two internal lights which makes it very easy to find stuff at night. The fridge's display is beautiful and the overall functionality is great either via the fridge itself or also via the included app. The Glacier also offers both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity, enhancing its usability. This allows for remote control and monitoring, which I find incredibly convenient. I can adjust the settings of the fridge in my shed directly from my house. The app also enables complete setting customization and firmware updates, adding to the fridge's overall functionality and user experience. When we talk about the size and portability of the EcoFlow Glacier fridge, there are a few key points to consider. Firstly, it has a large footprint compared to other models like the Bushman, which offers an additional 14 liters capacity but with a slightly smaller footprint. The Glacier itself weighs 23 kilograms without the batteries and wheels and around 26 kilograms fully equipped. Once loaded with food and drinks, you are looking at over 30 kilograms, which is quite hefty. An important aspect to note is the portable kit that comes with the Glacier, which includes two wheels and a handle, which might not always be convenient or feasible, especially in an outdoor setting. It also further increases the bulkiness of the fridge when you don't use the wheels or you transport it in the car. I just did a little test in regards to the insulation, because um, the EcoFlow uses VIP panels and they are supposedly way more insulative than, for example, stuff which other fridge makers use. However, I didn't find that to be the case. Um, the EcoFlow has 3 cm VIP, the Bushman has 4 cm of whatever. I have actually to look up what the Bushman has. I had a thermostat in each. I cooled them both down to minus 12 degrees, then switched them both off and the Bushman retained uh, the cold longer than the EcoFlow. Um, all the way through pretty much, that was visible within an hour. The Bushman still was 5 degrees cooler than the EcoFlow and even now after 12 hours um, the Bushman is 3 degrees cooler than the EcoFlow. Yeah, I guess uh, 1 cm less doesn't make up for the R value of the VIP panel. So, yeah, not bad. 
but simply the Bushman seems to be better insulated and keeps the cold better. In regards to the noise level, the fridge sits at around 53 decibels when running at full speed. The fridge has a IPX4 rating, which means it is splash water protected from all sides and you should be able to leave it outside in a little bit of rain. I left it outside overnight and the fridge was drenched in condensation and water. I did notice condensation build up in the display and under the screen, however that disappeared once the unit warmed up and the sun came out. So we just went over all of the features of the EcoFlow Glacier fridge and I think for a first fridge attempt it is a pretty good unit with some very unique features. However, the unit is not perfect and there are a few things you may want to consider if you intend purchasing one of these units. So let's have a look at that. The battery chemistry is NMC lithium, which I do understand because it has a higher energy density. However, it also only has 800 cycles and that really limits the life of the battery, especially for a fridge which is always running. Even though the battery is sold separately, you really need the battery because without the battery you can't actually make ice or you also can't use the solar charging. EcoFlow unfortunately has no direct charging connection, for example, to the EcoFlow Delta Max and you will need to use a 220 volt charger, which is not as efficient. In hot ambient temperature, the fridge struggled to stay below minus 3 or 4 degrees Celsius. This is no deal breaker for drinks, but it could be a problem if you want to keep goods deep frozen. The button to open the ice compartment is quite finicky and it requires a lot of pressure exactly in the middle, even though it is a very long button. I also observed some condensation in the EcoFlow Glacier's display after a night outdoors. It cleared up after an hour in the sun, but it's something to keep in mind in varying outdoor conditions. It is fairly heavy and bulky for a portable fridge. The handles are also not ideally integrated in the fridge and protrude further out than they need to. So my final conclusion and who this fridge is for. To be honest, if you love ice, if you love whiskey on the rocks or if you love ice cubes in your drinks, this definitely is a fridge for you because uh, ice making works brilliantly. It is super quick and I have to say it is very nice to have ice in your drinks when camping or out in the bush. But for me personally, as nice as this ice maker is, it sacrifices far too much space and I rather would get rid of the ice maker and have more interior space or a smaller footprint. And that is, I think, where EcoFlow slightly missed the market. If it's supposed to be a portable battery fridge which you take to the beach with you, uh, which you can take out for a day and say having a picnic or barbecue, I think it is too big and bulky and heavy. However, for a four-wheel drive fridge, which could be living in my camper trailer or four-wheel drive, I think it's too small. The footprint is a little bit too big. I also find that the design with the handles and the attachable wheels, it becomes even more bulky and, yeah, quite hard to really transport. When the fridge is loaded, it easily weighs 30 kilogram and more. And, yeah, that is just too heavy for a portable fridge. So I like to see a smaller portable version where the battery maybe only lasts for a day because a day on the beach or in the park that would be sufficient but the fridge is easier to handle and to carry. Then I also would love to see a version of this fridge which is really a normal 12 volt fridge replacement. Uh, maybe the ice maker optional or implemented into the cooling compartment so if not in use you can actually use it for storage space. But for that it needs to be a little bit bigger. 38 liters is not big enough in my book, especially for this footprint. I think 52, 60 liters around that mark, um, yeah, it would be perfect. So do I keep the fridge? Yes, I will keep the fridge here in my studio slash workshop um, because it keeps my drinks cold. And for that, the size is actually perfect. I don't mind that it is a bit bulkier, but would I have bought it for it no, I probably wouldn't have. So for the moment, I think it is just not portable enough to really take it to the beach for a day. And for the four-wheel drive or my camper trailer is just a little bit small. And again, while I love this ice maker feature, 
I still rather sacrifice it and have more interior space than having an ice maker which I use maybe twice a day. But hey, that's only me. If you love your ice on the rocks, then this is exactly the fridge for you. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you gained some useful information out of my video. As a small content creator, I really would appreciate if you could share, like, subscribe, and if you can afford it, maybe head over to Patreon or buy me a coffee and with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month, you can really help me to stay independent and create these videos for you. Thank you very much and I hope to see you along the tracks.